you can receive this energetically without the physical representation. You can make an energetic mesa. You can make an energetic crystal within your mind. Just like we're going to be creating an energetic sacred crystalline place for you to receive the right within. All of this can transcend physical stuff. But if you want to have your little mesa that is like a medicine bundle, that's awesome sauce. Tonight, all you're going to need is your seven stones and the cloth if you're going to do it with the physical aspects included, okay? If you want to do it without that, you don't need that. And if you want to just go ahead and receive it energetically and then allow the universe to help you to find your cloth and your stones, that's okay too. Hello, this is Bridget Ra with Divine Essentials. Alright guys, we are going to do the Noosta Rites or the first of the Noosta Rites. And I've been preparing and thinking and I read people's comments and things like that. And Spirit is really guiding me to make this simple for people because I feel like it has been a deterrent to people how complicated um, it's been presented for some, okay? For, especially for myself. I know for myself, I was like, oh my God, there's so much information. And as I've been reflecting and looking at everything, I've realized, like, as somebody that's a healer in a, a clear knower, right, me going through these rites and doing all of this stuff, I am somebody that likes to know the whole thing, right? I, I want to know all of it. I want to understand all of it. And the, the woman that taught me this right she's an awesome teacher she's awesome sauce she kind of reminds me of myself like in the future she's an older woman um she's cool you know but i feel like the way that she presented this is extremely a lot <laughs> and extremely overwhelming in one sense and then in another sense it, it leaves so many questions okay because she doesn't explain certain things she doesn't even talk about certain things but she does certain things and is like is like why well, do you know certain things especially when i get to the point of like okay now how do i give these rights to others what the hell were you doing <laughs> That's how I feel, and I, I mean it in the most respectful way because I know it's hard to teach people. I know it's hard to be a teacher. I think she did an awesome job. I think she almost over-delivered with the information she gives to people in the sense of, like, here's a bunch of information, and here's a bunch of downloads, and here's a bunch of papers, and PDFs, and MP3s, and all of this stuff, right? With that being said, though, there's so much that... I'm like, what? Why did we do that then? Okay. So with all of that being said, and with my connection to the divine and to the Pleiadians and all of that, I do feel very much like these are things that were already within myself. These are things that I was already doing. There were so many synchronicities and confirmations and things that I'm like, I did that. I already did that. I already integrated that. Like I I've already, I've already done this work in one way or another. And like the Kota Kuna Carpe Rite was one of the star rites that I received directly from spirit to myself. Had nothing to do with anybody telling me anything or anything like that. I was just like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the seven energies of the seven sisters or the seven Pleiadian stars to the seven chakras. And I thought I was doing a meditation that night, but when I was in the shower to get ready for that night, they were like, this is a rite. And it was. It ended up being the right. And even the way that I had written down what stars were getting connected to what chakras was confirmed in the information that I found about the Kota Kuna Carpe. You can go into my Facebook and see that, like, initially I had put it out as, like, a seven sister, seven chakra guided meditation. But as the time progressed and as I was getting ready and I heard what it was, I was like, okay, wait a minute. But things that, like, are in this, right also connect to the Lyran Triple Infinity Abundance Rite. So what she has us do is put like infinity symbols over our chakra in this first rite and in some of the other ones too. And it's like I did that in the Lyran Triple Infinity Abundance Rite. Sorry, Alcyon is distracting me because Alcyon is a Palladian and she's like, hello, I'm here. So yeah, the Lyran Triple Infinity Abundance Rite I did the, the golden infinity symbols over the chakras that, that I felt like needed to be integrated with that energy. Okay, so she does that in here. So it's like, okay, even more confirmation. I'm not crazy. Then with my 
Alcyon Light Healing, which is specifically connected to the Pleiadian energy, I talk about like the diamond vortex, right? With her, what she's doing is she's having us get into like a diamond pyramid chamber or crystal healing room, okay? So it's, it's again, very synchronistic, very familiar to me. Like it's not foreign for myself. When she's teaching these things, there's, there's so much within it and things that she's saying and doing that she's n she doesn't really explain why or whatever. Like, she just kind of does it, okay? And I feel like that's her making it own, her own, okay? So I'm going to make it my own. I'm still going to transmit the rights in the way that they're meant to be transmitted, even though the way that she did it is totally different because she's doing it long distance, okay? So I received a distance. She, you're going to receive a distance in this way. Um... What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you before each rite and just break it down for you, tell you what we're connecting with and why and all of that. And then if you want to receive that rite, if you feel called to receive that rite, you can purchase the video that I will be transmitting it to you within. So it'll be like a guided meditation slash energetic energy thing where you're going to go into a certain mind space and like a visualization and be open to receiving the right and that's all you need to do is be open to receiving the right you don't need to be doing anything crazy you don't have to be worried about why I'm doing what I'm doing unless you decide later down the road you want to transfer these to others we'll get there okay because I feel like that is something that's like there's just so much and that's what I found with the the Mooney key too is like there's just so much that it's like it's best to just take it in little little increments here and when I put the link down below, it will be a paywall, okay? So I'm going to teach you everything you need to know, and then you're just going to go and be in a receptive state. All you really have to do is be in a receptive state. Will there be homework? Yes, but it's nothing significant or crazy that you need to purchase anything for. And even with, like, the, the stones and the cloth, again, you do not need to purchase that stuff. And if you really can't get your hands on anything like that, you can receive this energetically without the physical representation. You can make an energetic mesa. You can make an energetic crystal within your mind. Just like we're going to be creating an energetic sacred crystalline place for you to receive the right within. All of this can transcend physical stuff. But if you want to have your little mesa that is like a medicine bundle, that's awesome sauce. Tonight, all you're going to need is your seven stones and the cloth if you're going to do it with the physical aspects included okay if you want to do it without that you don't need that and if you want to just go ahead and receive it energetically and then allow the universe to help you to find your cloth and your stones that's okay too okay because again I'm being guided to make this a little bit more simple for people so that they're not overwhelmed and so that they don't receive it because that's the whole point of these rites is to receive them seven to seven okay so the seven goddess initiation rites, or the Nusta Carpe, or the Nista Carpe, there's different ways to pronounce things. I'm going to pronounce things the way that they feel right for me to pronounce them, but I feel like it's not in disrespect, anything like that. I just have a hard time saying some of the words, and some of it just feels more natural to come out different ways. Like I noticed many times throughout receiving these, when she would talk about a specific star, I was like, that's not the name, but in my soul, in my heart, that doesn't sound right to me. Like Astoropa, she would be like Astorope, and you know Taigeta, she was calling it something else. Okay, so she's it's still spelt the same, but she's just pronouncing it differently. So however your soul like resonates and wants to speak on these things, that's okay too. And if they're too too much for you to take in. That's okay too. All you need to do is be open to receive these energies and know that that's what this is. It's seven goddess initiation rites. You can be a man or a woman. These are going to help you. So the Apus are the mountain spirits. That is just something that, you know, we're going to be talking about here. These came from the Apus. These came from the mountain spirits. These came from the sacred holy sites within Peru and Bolivia. It connects to the goddess energy or the Pachimama energy, which Pachimama is Mother Earth, okay? So carpe is a rite or initiation. That's why the Kotakuna carpe was the Kotakuna initiation or rite. These are the, the Nista, the Nusta initiations. So the Nustas 
are priestesses and goddesses in sacred archetypal feminine energies of nature. So some of them are going to connect to bodies of water. Some of them are going to connect to certain mountains. And again, that's why we're connecting with that Apu mountain spirit. Okay. And like I said, Pachimama is Mother Earth. And then the Quecha is the language of the Andes or the Peruvian shamans. Okay. The Quecha are, it, it's just a language. The Mesa is a table or an altar. It's like a, a portable altar, okay? The mesa is that bundle. It's that medicine bundle. It's a portable altar. So the seven goddesses that we're going to be connecting with in this are called Mama Okla, which is the first woman of the Incas. And then the second one is Donna Muja, which is the goddess of water. Then we're going to work with Mama Simona, which is the goddess of the ancestors. And then Donna Teresa, which is the goddess of love. Maria Sacapana, who is the goddess of the wind, and Juana Huaman Tika Tequila is the high priestess of vision, and then Tomosa Huaman Tequila is the high princess of freedom. Okay, so those are going to be the seven different goddesses that we're going to work with, and it's going to like correlate with the seven sisters of the Pleiades. There's going to be a, a certain sister for each chakra, and each one of them con connects with something specific, okay? So this was gifted to us from the Andean Cuero Medicine Men and Women of Peru via Don Marino Quisp in the year of 2010. They recognized and responded to the cry of the Great Mother, Pachimama, to heal her wounds and energetic imbalances. So that is what this is for. I did make a PDF thing that I can share with you guys. I'm going to keep adding to it every night as I go through these. And then at the end, I will have it to give to you in the final initiation when you go to, because when you go on to Etsy, it's going to be a, it's going to be a digital download and you'll receive like a PDF and on the PDF, there'll be a link to the video and to the corresponding information. So tonight, when you go to purchase the Mama Oklo, the first right you will get the video of me transmitting the right and you'll get the information associated with this right and the homework for this right and anything else that needs to be in there. So you'll, you'll get two PD or you'll just get one PDF. One PDF with all the information and the link to the video will be in there for you to receive that activation. All right. This will probably be the longest of the videos because we're just getting in here. We're connecting with it. We're understanding things. We're, we're setting the space. We're making sense of all of this. Okay. Another part is to opening your heart, okay? That is something that is going to be part of your homework throughout all of this. You're going to want to be opening your heart and being open and willing to receive these initiations. That's all you need to do. And a lot of you will probably find very much synchronistically that you are already aligned to some of the things going on in here. You may have like felt a calling to work with something specific and it's like, oh, and then here we are working with it specifically, you know, it, and, it, and if that doesn't happen, that's okay too. This will be the seed or the initiation being planted into you to grow with your dedicated unpacking, germinating and growing of that seed of potential, just like with the Muniki rites, just with the star rites, with the Nusta rites, it's all the same. I'm going to give you the initiation and the energy, or I'm going to be the channel for spirit to give it to you. I really don't have much to do with it other than being a willing participant to do this and teach you and train you and be that, that, that vehicle, but it's up to you to take it and continue to work with it and integrate it and be open to receiving it, but it will always be available to you once it's placed within, okay? So practice, the more that you connect with your heart, the more you will open to living in this moment. Each time that you will do a meditation or a journey to help you to open your heart, you're going to increase your ability to do so and Every time you open to the light, your heart expands. One way to empower this is to go outside, face the sun, and open your heart to receive in its light, which is a perfect thing to be doing right now. Another thing that's synchronistic is eight years ago today, I was like finishing up the Mooney Key Rites on the summer solstice. That's why I felt like I wanted to do it at this time because of the summer solstice. This is a perfect energy to be doing it in. Even if you, and energy is endless and, and limitless and timeless. It's just a great time to harness this and to deliver it to you. And you can receive this at any time. This could be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. You can be receiving this. It could be any time of the year. 
it's all good but going outside right now specifically is going to amplify that connection it, and going outside any day of the week is going to amplify and helping to open your heart because you're consciously doing it you're looking at the sun you know you're gazing i would go out like you know early morning and afternoon like sunset time if you're going to do any sun gazing but that can help you we don't want to be out there at high noon gazing into the sun because that can you know cause damage but over time early morning afternoon at that time it's okay for you to exercise and strengthen that ability to perceive the invisible world and to see the things that are outside of you also going outside at night when we have full moons like we have one coming up and just on a starry night looking and gazing and opening your heart that is how I got the Pleiadians to come closer that is how I got the starships to start coming into my like very close proximity is by going outside every night and just staring up into the stars and watching and waiting and and analyzing and figuring out what's always out here and what's not always out here and what moves and what doesn't move and all of that right and they would always come closer and it was about maintaining unconditional love. As soon as I went to fear or as soon as I got frustrated or as soon as I would try to do something, especially in the beginning, like say I saw them coming, oh my goodness, if I tried to take a picture or a video, they would leave. They needed to build the relationship with me to make sure that I wasn't going to be like using that for my own personal gain. And also in the beginning, I would get scared a lot too because it's like, what the hell is this that's coming? But if I could just maintain, and a lot of times I would just sit there and be like, unconditional love, unconditional love, unconditional love, they would come co closer. So going outside and opening your heart to that unconditional love, whether it's day or night, is going to help you throughout this practice. So remember, this is a step-by-step -step practice. You're going to want to do one breath, one moment at a time. You want to stay open and know that your spirit guides are with you, supporting you every step of your journey. Whatever your experience, just breathe and be open to receive the energy within every cell of your heart. You may like to draw or write what, up, what comes up for you. So if you go outside at night or you go outside during the day to just do this little like meditation, you don't have to have anybody guiding you for it. You don't have to have any music playing. It can just be a moment of peace. When you come back in from there, you may feel inspired to journal or write about what you experienced. Maybe you see something or you feel something and you want to put it into words. Another thing that's going to be important throughout all of this is maintaining gratitude. Feel gratitude for your day and for all that you've experienced, the path that you have walked. Let the special moments for which you are grateful shine in your heart. Now shift your attention from your heart to the heart of Mother Earth or Pachimama and let your heart meet with hers and feel her presence. With the rise and fall of each breath, place your hand over your heart right now in this moment and feel gratitude for the opportunity to do this for the opportunity to connect with the heart mother. See how the interdimensional connection between your heart and the earth and the stars is being forged once more and feel your connection within the matrix. So again, this is good for you to be getting into this mind space. Every time that we're gonna do one of these rites, we're gonna slow our consciousness down. We're gonna slow our breathing down. We're going to become aware of our surroundings. We're going to become open within our heart. We're going to become open within our intention. Our intention is basically, I'm open to receive the energy of Mama Oklo and Astaropa. That's the first star that we're going to be connecting with tonight. And that's all you got to do, man. Just got to be open and open and receptive, okay? There are other things in here that you'll receive too, like little parts of information about journeying and um, how to see auras with ease. There's little exercises in here that you can do. I will put this in there so you guys can see this stuff. But it isn't like super specific necessary for you to have that information right now to receive the right. It's just further information for you to learn and heal and grow and strengthen your ability to do this work, okay? So the Nusta Carpes are seven goddess rites from Peru and they are an amazing set of initiations to the sacred archetypal feminine energies of nature. Welcome to the journey of completeness and unity which reconnects you to your own heart frequency and to our great mother earth Pachimama. This life-changing journey enables you to return into unity and alignment with the primal source of our planet. In essence, we humans are the caretakers of the land and it is our birthright and responsibility to fully 
return into balance with and optimally resonate with Pachimama and her primordial forces. When we are in harmony with Pachimama, our sense of self expands and we find it easier to surf through the rough waters that we sometimes find in our lives. The Nusta Carpes, pronounced Nuista Carpi, the Nuista Carpis are Quechua words meaning goddess initiations. These special, beautiful, and authentic initiations have spread around the world. The Nustas are the goddesses of the mountains, the Apus, and the waters along the highlands of Peru and Bolivia. The Nusta Carpe are therefore the initiations of the seven Andean goddesses, the Incan shamanic traditions. Now is the time for the great transformation and balance of humans to bring healing to Mother Earth, Pachimama. The Nustas help immensely with this balance. The intent of the Nuista Carpe is to soften the heart of both men and women and to help empower women. The seven initiations are seeds of light and are energetic points of transmission to balance the feminine and masculine energies within you. As you heal and balance the divine feminine within yourself, so do you help to heal Pachimama. The Nusta Carpe writes, are open to both men and women and are available to everyone regardless of their spiritual orientation. They are not only for those who have appreciated or apprenticed in the Andean or other ancient spiritual traditions. They are for those who wish to heal the divine feminine within themselves and carry that healing into the world for those who wish to bring greater peace and unity to our planet. So right one is going to be with Mama Okro. And she is the daughter of father, father, son, and mother earth. I'm like, sorry. And it's funny, right? Because it got father, son. Um, originates from Lake Titicaca. Lake, Titi, Lake, Lake Titicaca. <laughs> Did I say it right? She is the earth goddess, the great mother of all goddesses. And she's also the goddess of wisdom. She's an earth goddess, okay? The essence of Mama Oklo is to ground us in our own center and to find our own inner sanctity. This right heals your feminine power and restores balance. The benefits are increased in vitality, passion, and physical security and will help to overcome hostility, anxiety, depression, and lack of confidence in one's future. Okay? And then there is homework for this right and basically the homework is very simple. You're going to want to go and connect with the star Asteropa because that is again the star that we are connecting with for this goddess. Okay, so we would, this is the star of illumination and it lightens up your way. The star for how you walk upon this earth with a focus on how. Okay, spend some time under the stars or looking at a picture of the Pleiades and begin to develop your relationship with Asteropa and to really empower Mama Oklo. So that's all you got to do is either look at the star, right, a picture of, of the Pleiades or go outside at night and just connect with that energy. Even if you can't see the Pleiades, depending on where you are, going outside there and knowing that you're connecting with her, just let yourself gaze to the star that's speaking to you, that's holding and harnessing the energy of Mama Okla and Asteropa for you at that time, okay? I, I guarantee you it will be okay. And then um, feel the light and the wisdom of Asteropa pouring through you. The light code came to meet for all, for you all. As we lie in the stillness of the night, looking to the stars, we perceive something new is softly stirring. It whispers so gently it may not yet be audible to one's ear. Glimmers of starlight have touched our hearts, and it comes to us now as a nectar or as a healing balm. You can journal your relationship no matter where it is right now and dream it into being for the tendrils of light are here with you. So you would want to spend some time either looking at the picture of the Pleiades and you can even get pictures that show you specifically on it like there's Asteropa. Okay, I will try to put one of those on here so you guys can get a picture. I'll try to remember, put a picture that shows like Asteropa is here, Tiget is here, Puppet is here, Puppet is there. Okay, that way you can know and look right at it. But again, you don't need to know in order to connect with her. You just need that intention to do so. But afterwards, you can journal your experience with her. Other parts of the homework is um, tuning into your breath helps you remain grounded with Mama Oklo. 
Focusing on your breath is one of the simplest ways we can bring ourselves back into the present moment. A simple technique is to start by simply taking a slow, deep inhale for the count of five counts. One, two, three. And then a slow, deep inhale, exhale for the count of five. And then you want to do that steadily. Okay? And you can also exhale deeply, like, longer. You can do the one, two, three, four, five in, and then even expand that out like 10 or 15 counts out. However you're comfortable, don't make yourself pass out. Just do what feels right to you. If you want to do the equal and the equal, or if you want to do the in and then a longer out, that is okay. Either way, however it feels right for you. The beauty of the breath is is it's always available to us whenever we need to ground ourselves back into the present moment our breath is always within reach as an anchor so start using it to anchor you back into the present moment to stay calm to stay at peace using your senses to ground as well you can tune into each of your senses and name one thing each that you can currently see smell taste touch or hear that will help you to get grounded as well. Take your shoes and socks off and find a nice path, patch of grass to ground. Okay, walking around and becoming aware of the sensation of the earth contacting your feet. There's negative ions that will literally help you to feel healthier and to sleep better and to do what you need to do. Take a shower and be mindful of the water that's running over your body. Or if that's not possible, run cool or warm water over your hands and splash your face to get grounded back in the moment. Stop and listen to the sounds around you. Become aware of the sounds that you can hear close by. Tune into the subtle sounds as well and as the more obvious ones. And then gradually expand your attention outward so you are focusing on sounds in the distance. Again, try to focus in on the less obvious sounds as well as the more dominant noises that you can hear. So the more in tune you become, the higher the greater height of intu intuition you'll have. And you need to be grounded in the present moment to really tune into those things. This is how we strengthen our connection to our intuition. It's by doing things like this. Smell your favorite perfume, scent, or essential oil. And that is a very powerful way. Your olfactory center can invoke memories. It can help you to replace beliefs. It can do all types of things. So work with the scent. And then practice some mindful eating. Take one thing like a piece of fruit or chocolate and slowly and mindfully be aware of the taste, the texture as you swallow it. Give yourself a mini massage. You can start on your feet and move upwards to help bring yourself back into your body. Okay, so again, these are very simple things. There's nothing crazy over complicated. It's basically just take time out every day to get grounded um, and to build your relationship with that star. Okay. And, and you can do this as often as you like or as not often as you like, but it's up to you how strong things become for you by how often you practice it. So if you're like, I'm just going to get this right and I'm never going to think about it again, or I'm not going to ground and I'm not going to go connect with Astaropa, this is not going to be as powerful for you. But if you do, it will get powerful. This is how I started my connection with them all those years ago. That's why I'm like, I feel like I already did this. And I feel like I've already confirmed it to myself many a times. And that's why, again, I feel like I'm being guided to do it in a more simpler way with you all because I don't want people to feel overwhelmed or blocked when it comes to this. It's really not complicated. It just sometimes sounds like it. Okay, so basically for each one of these activations and things, there's going to be like an imaginary room that we're going into, which is like our sacred altar room. This is where all the healing is going to go down. This is where we're going to call on the initiations. This is where we're going to ask the great spirit to be there, Pachimama to help us. This is where we're going to call on the goddess or the high priestess energy, whichever one we're working with, and the energy of the star to come in and work with us and transmit the energy. And there's going to be a chi ball that is connected to each one of these. So the first chi ball is going to be red. And then in the second right, it will be orange. And it's going to correspond to all of the chakras, okay? And it's just a visualization thing. It's to help us with the transferring energetically through space and time. There will be an energetic ball that I will be working with you 
to help you to receive this first rite. It's going to be read, and then it will change throughout the rest of them. And um, there will be golden infinity symbols that you're going to be installing on your chakras, and you will be setting intention. There is a gatekeeper that will be working with us too. So it's like we're going to go up to the gatekeeper to go into our crystal chamber healing room where that, that altar is. And on the altar, we're going to imagine that there's, you know, a sacred chi ball there. And all you're going to need to do is visualize and I will be guiding you and you'll have your stones with you either physically or imaginarily, okay? You don't have them it's okay you can get them and when you get them you basically just intend to bring that energy into them but if you already have one even better you're just going to want to hold it in your hand and again i will be guiding you on all of this i'm just kind of preparing you for it now so you know what we're doing and all of that it's just a way to, to do this now if okay so another thing that i want you to do is if you do know where the directions are around you that's great if you don't that's okay too i always tell people you can just intend to connect with the directions you're going to want to open sacred space before you receive each of these rites and basically what that entails is con connecting with the winds of the directions or calling on the archetypes of the directions. I have a prayer that I've used and given to people who've done the Muni Key Rites with me. I've given it to people with the Star Rites. I can give it to you here too. But basically, I'm going to open sacred space for you while I do the right. But if you feel guided, you can also open sacred space wherever you are and use that prayer to, to create the space for yourself. Get your, your little mesa cloth out if you have one. If not, imagine you're doing this right so you're going to be like i now call on the directions of the south into the serpent who's going to be an archetype to help us through this process to create sacred space to help me in this process it doesn't have to be elaborate it just we're, we're intending to create sacred space if you have a sound tool or if you have like little palo santo or or whatever you can even just clap like i now call to the direction of the south to help bring in the energy and the archetype of the serpent, okay? And then I call on the direction of the west, the winds of the west, mother, sister, jaguar, come to our medicine space and protect us, okay? And then to the winds of the north, ancient ones, grandmother, hummingbird, you who've come before us, you who will come after us, our children's children, join us. And to the winds of the east, great eagle condor, come to us from the place of the rising sun, Join us and allow us to rise wing to wing with the Great Spirit. And to Mother Earth, Pachimama, we've gathered for the healing of all your children, the stone people, the creepy crawler, the fin, the furred, the winged ones, and all of our relations. And to the Great Spirit Creator, you who are known by a thousand names and you who are the unnameable, we are so grateful and thankful for you to join us today as we transmit the first of these sacred rites. Okay, and that, that's all you got to do. It doesn't have to be crazy or anything like that. I'm going to do it in the way that I feel guided to do it. It's going to be similar to how she did it, but it's going to have my spin on it. And I do recommend that if you get these rights and you decide to gift them to someone else in the future, you do similar. You take what resonates and you bring in what makes sense for you in the way that you work as a healer and, you know, make it your own. After these videos are done, after I'm done transmitting all seven of them, I will make a separate video where I talk about how you can go about transmitting these to others. Because the way that she transmits it in person versus how we would transmit it over distance is a little bit different. And what you need to know in terms of receiving these rights is different than what you need to know in terms of gifting these rights, okay? So I've already received them. I know what to expect on that end and how to guide you on that end, and I, I've learned how to gift them, okay? Another thing, basically, is it, just be somewhere comfortable. Just be somewhere comfortable. If you are using the physical cloth and the seven stones, Make sure there's somewhere that you can easily grab them because you're going to be grabbing them. And you can do this when standing up. You're going to be grabbing the one that connects to each chakra and you're going to be blowing into them. 
and then when we're done with that chakra, you'll be putting it down, and you'll get the other one, the other, the, we're going to start at the root, and then we're going to go to the sacral, and then we're going to go to the solar plexus, and then we're going to go to the heart, and then, you know, so each one, we're going to, we're going to grab each one, very short little, and I'll be I'm doing all weird types of shit, okay? <laughs> There's different things that we're going to be doing. Uh, you'll probably laugh at me. You could do it along with me. You may notice you start to spontaneously have stuff happen throughout it. I did, and it was very cool. Uh, but it's basically either have them that you're going to be physically grabbing to hold at your place and to blow into, or imagine that they're there, okay? And you're in your sacred space. All right, so I will see you in the next video where it's going to be more so you're going to be looking at the at the sacred space that I've set up. You're going to be looking at my my mesa. I have my mesa here already. I will show you for this one because I feel like it's kind of important just to like give you guys an idea a little bit. So like this is our sacred altar. All right, I've I've set up a sacred altar for us, and this is my my mesa, which is bigger than what you're probably going to end up with at the end of this if you've just started building a mesa, because I've had this for years and it kind of built itself. But this is the this is the thing that I wrap my mesa with. This is actually a traditional Peruvian belt, but again, it was gifted to me, so I use it because it matches. And that's another thing too. Okay, the goddess that we're working with tonight, she's actually the one that helps us to like recognize these these patterns uh, as being identifiable okay like if you go to Peru and you purchase a cloth they know who made the cloth based off of the way that the cloth is designed and each stitch is, is specific so these are very sacred tools um, but again you don't have to have a fancy dancy one you don't even have to have a physical one I also have the archetypes here again to remind you um, so we've got the uh, what do you call it the Jaguar right we got the serpent, we've got the hummingbird, and we've got the eagle, okay? Eagle, condor, hummingbird, serpent, jaguar, mesa, okay? This is our sacred medicine bundle, and inside of it, I have a lot of things that I've collected over the years, but what I'm using tonight specifically are my chompy stones. So I'm going to prepare my, my stuff right now for tonight, and I'll show you so you have an idea in case you ever decide to do this um, now again some of the things that are in here are just in here I also noticed like throughout the process with her she's like you know just get your salmon stones bop it a boop so I ended up keeping like a physical like red or like for all of them anyways but I also ended up using these these are chumpy stones these are available on shaman's market each one connects and they make sense. So this is the root chakra. It's the first one. So I'll be using that to draw on your root chakra tonight. And then for the for the when we go to the second chakra, I'll be using the one with two. And then when we go to the the third chakra, I'll be using the one with three, and so on and so forth. So this one is one two three four, and then this one is one two three four five, and then this one is one two three four, one two one two three four five six and then this is one two three four five six seven okay and we try to make a circle for our medicine stuff um, it doesn't have to be perfect but this is something I activated the day after my mother died which is actually today eight years ago today my mother died, not eight years six years ago today my mother had passed away and I went and worked on my my um, my mesa in person somewhere nearby with somebody who was teaching stuff and I and it was all about connecting with our ancestors and all of that but this is my root stone okay and then this is my sacral stone because it's orange and then we have the solar plexus stone and again you don't need to have two stones just get one stone or ha imagine that you got a stone then we get the heart stone and the throat stone and then the third eye stone and then the crown stone okay and then this is my little representation of uh, sight and flight. That is my representation of that. This is my original pie stone. This is another pie stone that when I got a new pie stone, I was like, 
I tap the energy into it. But both of them have been present in all of the rites that I've done. I also got this that you might want when we get to that right. It's further down the road. This is a protective stone. You can either get a black stone or protective stone. It's not necessary. Again, tonight we're, we're just going to be working with seven stones. This, this is something to think about, though. If you've got tourmaline or something protective or shiny or black and shiny that you can use when we get here, um, it does come about later down the road. But it's not something you need to worry about tonight. This is my Alto Mosaic energy, which is lightning that, you know, sand that's been struck by lightning, but Alto Mosaic are those who've been struck by lightning three times. They are seen as very powerful shaman beings. And then um, in here, I have more sacred tools that I use. Um, I do like a water element when I do illuminations. I do a fire element when I do different stuff. I got my shaman balls. I got my little frog that represents leaping forward. Um, so when someone comes to get a healing from me and I open up my mesa, if they pick a particular stone, it can help me to know where they might be blocked or what's going on in their life. This is an abundance thing. It's a, it's a coin that I found at one point, and it's got like a hole in it, like little, little weird stuff on it. Kind of looks like, I don't even know, like Chinese or something. This is my mother's uh, stone her pie stone that I, cause she got the rights for me too. My dad got the rights for me and after he got them, he woke up. And again, this could be another one that could be used for that, that protective stone. I just ended up using that cause they, she specifically said obsidian. And I was like, ah, oh, I guess I'm obsidian. So, and then there's a little tiny pie stone and other stones in here. There's, there's all types of stuff, but these are stones that I found outside in nature, red, green, yellow. Okay. Like those are out in nature. And you don't have to buy anything or get anything fancy to be able to do this. You don't even have to have anything physical to do this. Just do what you're being guided to do, okay? Even this is a little black stone. That would work for, for what we're talking about when we get there. These are all ones that I found in nature. They're, they're easily, readily available. You just got to take a walk and look and have an open heart. All right? So, open your sacred space. Do a little cleansy cleanse. And I will meet you on the other side to do the rat. And uh, I did make a, can a couple of candles. My ears just started ringing, so Spirit has just stepped in. Um, this one is Palo Santo. So this is perfect. Okay, so I'm going to light a little bit of Palo Santo candle for tonight to help us with that fire and that transformative energy and this is for protection this is cedar oh it smells so good I made a nice strong candle of Palo Santo I did add that to my Etsy too if you want one it is a cord cutting ritual so you get like a little cord to cut and you get a Palo Santo candle and you get two pages of directions and I make it and I send it to you and you can cut the cords to anybody or anything that is blocking you from your blessings, your opportunities, from true love, whatever it is that you've got that you feel like you might be needing some support with. Okay? So, yeah. We got this going. Need to thank you. We call again to the Great Spirit, to the Creator, to the Ancestors, to the Archetypes to join us in our opening our sacred space and preparing this energy so that we can go to our sacred crystal healing chamber and we can do what we need to do to receive Mama Oklo and Astaropa, the earth goddess energy. And if you are interested in going further and receiving this right with me, you can go ahead and do the description box or into the, the uh, comment section and everything will be available for you. In Rune, Namaste.